hope they're in obedience to the Lord. And uh, it's been a blessing to me. And I, all that we're going through, I, mean, I think it's going to be a blessing to somebody else. But I felt sometimes the Lord puts his finger on something in your life and you just have to do it to get it off. Yeah. <laughs> John chapter number 6, verse 1. Say amen. amen. Let's get down to the miracles. Amen. I like the miracles of Jesus. Who does? 
I, I, I like reading about the miracles of Jesus. They were true, no doubt about it. And even though we don't see Jesus walking around physically like he did and witness him touching a leper and cleansing the leper or touching a man that's blind and him reading sight. But I have been part of some miracles in my life. Amen. Uh, I've been part of some miracles tonight. I'd say tonight, if you say tonight, that God's done a miracle Amen. in your life. Amen. I, I remember, uh, well, for just one instant right here, Sister Trish. Y'all remember when we prayed over Miss Trish? She had some cancer spots on her and she went back. Maybe it's just gone. Huh? Uh, let's look at uh, Sister uh, Keisha. Amen. Uh, many miracles, if you think about it. I've been in a wreck flip the end over end seven times, Brother Steve. No seatbelt. Truck just mashed in. And I kid you not, Brother Michael, when I come out with it, I was scratched. I say that's a miracle. Amen. And uh, Jesus. He was about the business of people, huh? After all, he come for us, amen. God sent him for us. So let, let's get down here where he feeds the 5,000. I'm going to share a couple thoughts with you that God gave me, amen. Verse 1 says this, And after these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Can you imagine looking down, being Philip? Can you imagine being up there on that mountain, looking down and seeing more than 5,000 people? And Jesus, the King of kings, Lord of lords, asks you, where can we get some bread? Where can we get some meat to feed us? And this is what the Bible goes on to say. Verse number six. And he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And then Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them uh, may take a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, son of Peter's brother, saith unto him, There's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number, about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sat down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Let's go to the Lord's prayer. Lord, thank you for your word tonight. God help me tonight. God, help me preach thus saith the Lord. God, give me the remembrance, Lord God, what you pressed upon my heart all week about this passion. God, may we go out and use it to glorify and honor thy name. God, I pray for our nation tonight. God, I pray for the ones that's been mentioned tonight. God, are you? God, may you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in your precious Son's name. Jesus. Amen. 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 
So we see right here where Jesus is, and we see what he's got. The Passover feast is nigh. We got hungry people that's following. Amen. I'm a follower of Jesus. Amen. Ain't you tonight? And uh, Jesus uh, wasn't caught by surprise. Amen. And I often wonder about Philip here when Jesus asked him that to see what he was going to say. He already knew what he was going to say. Yeah? And uh, Jesus already had a plan. Amen. I'm glad God, Brother Michael, from the beginning, he already had a plan for old Dustin Harrow, amen. He already had a plan for Stephen Young, amen. He already had a plan for all of Baptist Church. And I'm going to go with Jesus' plan, amen, tonight. So, look here. Oh, Andrew said, Lord, there's a little lad over here. He's got five barley loaves and two fishes. I wonder what they was thinking. When he told them to sit down, maybe it had kicked in by then that, hey, we just seen him do all kind of miracles before that. He, he's the one. He's got it going on. He can speak, look, he can speak or think, and they would be filled without even putting nothing in their mouth physically, man. Because he's Jesus, and he's the King of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. He's everywhere. He's all knowing. He's all powerful, and he's all God. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. So he makes them sit down in the grave. And he takes them five barley loaves and them two fishes. Now I try to think about this a lot, a little bit, brother. If I was to take five barley loaves and two little old fishes, I, I think about it. Y'all know my her. Just, just to sit there. You're going to answer Jake and he's hollering at you. Going down the road. Huh? <laughs> now, if I was to take a nap, goes Michael. With them, I don't know how big they was. All I know is five barley loaves. And cut as much as I could, Brother Michael. That'd be hard to get 5,000 pieces of it. Five plus thousand pieces of food, of crumbs. Y'all see what I'm talking about? But Jesus, all powerful. That was just a man that said, I didn't even count men and children. Hey, but Jesus, in all his glory, and all his power, Brother Stephen had a plan. He had a plan. And I want you to, as you look at this text tonight, I want you to see two thoughts that I'm going to leave you with. And I believe they'll help you tonight that the Lord spoke to me this past week. First thing I'd like to say here tonight is that Jesus will take little and make much out of it. Amen. Are y'all with me tonight? Somebody with me tonight? Jesus will take little and make much out of it tonight. He'll take little and make much out of it tonight. He'll take a little old carpenter, amen, that didn't know nothing but Bud Light, marijuana, I'm telling you, what that little town duck head and say the song, amen, and put him behind a pulpit, amen, that preached us, saith the Lord, that Jesus is the way, that Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the light, and people come to know God. Oh, God, I'm telling you right now, God, I'll take a little bit of something, I'm telling you right now, and make much out of it. I remember in 1 Kings chapter number 17 where Elijah, he says, go on down by the brook cherub and the ravens is going to feed you bread in the morning and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. I don't know what ravens might not mean much to you, I'm telling you right now, but they did to Elijah that day. I'm telling you right now, just some simple little old ravens, I'm telling you, fed them man, because God told them to do so. He'll take something little and use it great for his name, amen. He'll take something small and make it big for his name. Amen. I remember, look here, I was just an old uh, town duck head. Amen. I'm telling you right now, oh, they probably shook their head. Hopefully somebody prayed for me. I'm sure somebody did when I went by. But oh God, oh God and all his glory, God and all his mercy had a plan for old Dustin Harrell. And God and all his mercy has a plan for you and a plan for your family uh, that he'll get much glory out of tonight. 
tonight. Gotta take little, I'm telling you tonight, and make much out of it tonight. Y'all hear me tonight? Gotta take little, I'm telling you, and make much out of it tonight. Thank God, I'm telling you right now, he just didn't take, he bled it all out, poured it all out on the Catholic's gospel and handing your sin, but it wouldn't have took but a drop of his precious clean blood, I'm telling you right now, for the remission of sin. Ah, oh, you see a woman, look, she has a disease of blood for 12 years, and she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'm telling you right now, a little bit of faith, I'm telling you right now, she spent all she had, she done all she knew, and she was healed tonight. God will take a little tonight, and he'll make much of it tonight. He'll take just a little bit, look. Just a few little old loaves of bread, amen, and a few fishes, I'm telling you right now, and multiply it all so somebody will be filled tonight. Thank God tonight for his love and for his mercy tonight. Thank God, look, tonight that ain't nothing catches him off oh, guard. He knows your name. He knows every tear that you cry. He knows every burden that you got. I'm telling you right now, he loves you tonight, and he'll take a little and make much. Take a little old boy. I heard the story of William and Booth. I wish I could quote it. But he had a messed up beginning. And old William and Booth, you know what he found? One of the greatest things uh, that we might know of uh, in history. Uh, one of them, the Salvation Army. He'll take little and make much of it tonight. He'll take little, I'm telling you, tonight and make much of it tonight. How you think about all of them people sitting down in the grass? I'm telling you right now. And the disciples distributing. I don't know how much they were distributing. I believe the Bible by faith. Every word. Somebody asked me some questions out of the Bible. I said, look, all I know how to do is to well, pick up right here in Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning that God, look, a big old God took a little old word and made much to his glory out of it. I'm telling you right now, he'll take a little, Brother Michael. Take much. Make much. Make much. Oh, uh, I like what Brother Michael told me one time. I wrote, my Bible real loud. He gives me all these, these uh, good quotes that God gave me. One time Brother Michael told me, he said, the devil, he divides and subtracts. That's what he wants to do. But God multiplies and adds the night. And God, he'll take something little the night. And look, make something great. Y'all looking at the widow's mic. Oh, I'm telling you right now. He said, all I had is just a couple mites right here. All I had was a mite to put in. But I'm giving all I got. And I'm telling you, giving all you got to God. That will bless your heart. God will bless you and he honors that. Y'all think about what the Bible says. If you just have faith. The size of a mustard seed. That's pretty little. You can say to these mountains. Brother Gray, be moved and have moved. God will take something little. He'll take something little. And he'll, he'll make much of it. He'll take something little. And he'll make much of it. Second thing, I had all of I ain't even got any of the examples that I've been preaching to myself all week. I guess that's what God wants y'all to hear. It's like I can't even remember. Second thing, God will take little and make much. Second thing. I want you to look. They had some people with some empty bellies. They had some people probably there with some empty hearts. They had some people there that was lacking. I lack. I lack. Second thing right here to God, I'll take something empty and make it full. God, I'll take something empty, Brother Michael, and make it full. Look at them 12 baskets. I'm telling you that. They was empty. Their stomachs was probably empty. They probably hungered. It might have been high. I don't know. They had to walk maybe a long way. And God filled them up tonight. And God filled them up tonight. I'll tell you what God, God will do. Amen. He'll take a soul that's lost and died that's going to hell. And he'll knock on it. And so that person right there may either open the door and accept God and let him in, or God will knock a little bit more, and God might not come back and knock on it again. But that person that opens the door, amen. Oh, man, his life was forever changed. He'll never be the same, because therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a new creation tonight. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, he'll get all the fruits of the Spirit right then, amen. 
Amen. Ain't that awesome that God will take something empty and fill it up again? If you remember, God said, uh, Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. I got to go through Samaria. All the disciples were wondering why in the world we're going through Samaria. We don't have no dealings with them. We go around when we got to go that way. But he said, I must needs go through Samaria. And they had a woman that come to that well that day. Amen. You know what? She was empty, Brother Larry. She was empty. Amen. She had several husbands. Amen. The one she had there wasn't even her husband. Amen. She was searching for love in all the wrong places. But the day she got to that well, sister, that, that day that she got to that well, she was thirsty. Amen. She was thirsty in her soul. And Jesus gave her some that she wouldn't thirst no more. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. I'll take something in me. Oh, yeah, take something empty. Amen. And he'll fill it up tonight. Boy, that's good tonight. Amen. That's good. Jesus said, look, if you have the bread of life, if you eat this bread, you'll never uh, hunger no more. Amen. Hey, she said, he saw that woman at the well. Look, this water right here, you're going to thirst some more. But when I give you the drink, you take this, you'll never thirst no more. Out of your bellies will be flowing living or rivers of living waters in that. He'll take something empty. And make it full. First Kings chapter number 17. Oh, the Lord said, after he tells Elijah, that Elijah, go to him by chair. He said, go to Zarephath. There's going to be a widow there that's going to take care of you. When he gets to Zarephath, you know what he finds? He finds a working widow. Amen. She's hunting some sticks. Amen. To take care of her and her son. To cook on. To take care of her and her son. He said, give me some water. How oh, she got him some water? He said, get a little bit of oil. And get a little bit of meal. And make me a little bread. I'm just paraphrasing. You can go to for you son. She said, you know what I'm doing? I'm going to get this the last couple of sticks for me and I can prepare the last meal for me and my son and we're going to die. We're going to die because this is all we got. But Elijah said, just do as I say. And she made it for right. And I'm going to tell you right now. He said, go on back to that barrel. I'm telling you right now. Ain't going to be some man in that coming and be very many days out of that barrel. I'm telling you, God will take some empty, brother Michael, and he'll fill her up. Amen. He'll fill her up. I'm telling you, he'll take some uh, empty and fill it up. He'll take little white men and make much of it. I'm telling you, he'll make much of it tonight. Oh, I'm telling you right now, God loves you tonight. Oh, he wants you to prosper, amen. He wants to bless you tonight, amen, and he will tonight. But God tonight, as we see these five loaves and these two fishes, oh, what a miracle. That's a miracle I'm just reading it, Brother Stephen. But God, He'll take a little bit of make one. Amen. And He'll take something in me and fill it up. I couldn't help but think about Paul and Silas doing the work of the Lord. Get through in the jail. I thought about this now. Got through in the uttermost part of the city down there. Y'all have been in jail? <laughs> I, I've been in jails for visiting people, but as far as me being going to jail, I, I should have been in jail and done some time, Brother Michael. I really should have. I really should have the things I've done. But God spared me. I asked Him for, to forgive me. And thought about Paul Silas down there in that jail. If you ever go in a jail, me and Jessica, she went with me in one of them. And uh, we did this ministry. And they select a certain number of people that you can minister to. And some of these people was killed people, molested people. Uh, they, they, they stole, robbed, burnt down the house. And, and they don't look like people that you would find sitting on the front row of a church. And so I am imagine in this jail, look, there was some darkness in there. It was empty down there. It was empty down there, look. It had people in it, but it had, it had death in it. There was people that was alive in there, look, but there wasn't no light in it. But Paul and Silas got down there about midnight, brother Nate, and they began to sing praises and pray to God, amen. And that jail got so full, amen, that the door shook open, the wall shook, amen, and, and the door flung open, that's the best part, I'm telling you right now, they had an old, old guard that probably walked there every night on his duty that was empty in his heart, amen, and he, he probably walked there just thinking, 
and every night. Now look, I can't wait till the shift's over with where I can go back home. I hate life. Maybe he said, I'm not happy. I don't have joy. I don't have love. I'll be glad when it's over with. But look at here. What was spilled come rushing out on out the door at him. And the empty man that night got filled. And not only him, look at I love a household salvation. Ain't that something? Yeah. Brother Gabe, when, when my daddy, I, I've seen that happen a lot of times. Most of the time it's the mom at church with the kid. And old daddy, he just wants to do his thing. And that's just normally the way it is. But then he gets warned by the conversation, what the Bible says, about, about the wife. Because of her overflowing saucer, amen. And then he gets in a little sip off that saucer, amen. And then he gets filled, amen. And the next time you see him, look at your daddy and mom with the two sons and the two daughters with him. He made their own back. You see him, there's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. I'm telling you right now, God will take something that's empty. God will take something that's empty, look, and fill it up. I can lay up my hand. Uh, October 26, 1992, 899 Barclays. Look, I was empty as a young little lad, about eight years old. I was in there, and I'll never forget. I don't remember what, what, what happened. I don't remember. Look, no big boom. I don't even remember what I said, but I remember that I was laying on my belly praying. And I'm telling you, God convicted me that day and showed me, look, I was in need of a Savior. I've heard it preached in every Bible school, 27 of us, all, all that made here. I heard a preacher get up and preach the Word of God. But that day, look, I was empty that day. But that day, after I called out to God, I got full. Filled. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Filled. Oh, he'll take some in. He'll fill it up. He'll take little and make much out of it. He'll take little and make much out of it. He'll take something that's in and fill it up. Now, I'm almost done. I'm going to tell you this. So, if you like Bible numbers, I kind of like Bible numbers. If you'll do Bible numbers in your Bible, Five barley loaves and two fishes. Two fishes. Two means separation or division. One of the things. Five means grace. When we were separated from God, hungry, empty. God showed his grace, number five, to me and you, by grace are you saved through faith. And when you add God's grace to somebody that's separated, you get number seven. Amen. And that means completion. Amen. You're completely full. That's right. Because Christ, look, well, just so we might go through hard times in our house, or they might go through hard times at work. But baby, you probably got some hard times, but there ain't everybody in here. But I'm going to tell you right now that God loves you, and I'm telling you right now, God sent his son to die on Calvary's cross so that you could be full Amen. and you could be much. Amen. Amen. And if you got that, I'm telling you right now, Satan's going to bang on you. Hey, the wind's going to blow on you tonight. There ain't no doubt about it. All y'all faithful members that come in here, even the Wednesday night service when y'all come to Sunday school and y'all living right, trying to do right. Listen to me. I feel in the same fire dogs that y'all feel. But let me tell you something. Because of God's grace, because of his love, look here. Y'all listen to me. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. One day, look here, I'm going to see. I'm going to see what I think some of our faithful family members will see. Amen. And that's beautiful tonight. God will take little and he'll make much out of it. And God will take something empty and he'll fill it up. Lord, thank you for your word tonight. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. God, as we go out tonight, God, help us to remember, God, how you blessed us.
We love you, praise you, in Christ's name. Amen.